So could you could you tell us your name again? Okay, my name is B.J. Hickey. It wasn't that back in 1971, okay. but uh, I was a in-flight um, administrative clerk in the check-in office for Northwest Airlines in the flight attendant office below a concourse. And that time, it was just little offices. You know, you just got to the terminal, went downstairs, and they had these little separations where crew scheduling, dispatch was in one area, and we were in another area of all these little um, containers, like they were just, I don't even know what you call them now, cubicles, sort of, where check-in was right there. The planes would come right up to the window and you'd go out to the airplane. Oh, it was and, that long ago. Okay. So all I can remember is that I was there by myself and it was really quiet. And all of a sudden I can hear all this noise from the dispatch and scheduling and they were talking really loud and everything. So I went in there and they just said, uh, we have a situation and go back to your office and man the phones and so I said fine and I was pretty excited I didn't know what was happening so they just said uh, the FBI will be coming out and they will be taking over your office so I said okay and uh, pretty soon the FBI came in the office I don't know there seemed to be like five six or seven of them and they took over all these little cubicles and in those days I don't know what you had for talking I call them walkie talkies but you know 71 whatever they had to talk to each other a two way radio perhaps probably okay. yeah and that was you know it was just I was just sitting there just saying don't do anything just be quiet and watch so it was at SeaTac okay. airport in the in flight service office and that was the day before thanksgiving so i worked until 10:45 i can't tell you uh, about approximately what time i know it was dark when all this started happening and uh, they must have called my boss, who was Mr. Fran Duvall at that time, from home to come out. And so I, st I didn't know. I was hoping I could stick around anyway. But I do remember seeing parachutes. I remember seeing not the money itself, but backpacks. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. They said four parachutes. And all I can remember is sort of like a, a dirty greenish brown color. And I don't know if those were parachutes or backpacks. It was a dark color. I thought, well, if anybody's still alive, it's just like my boss. I mean, you know, the man is still alive, and you have a, you know, somebody who was actually there. Yeah. Because they really didn't have a lot of information about when the plane landed to when it took off to fill in the gaps of, you know, what really did go on. Okay. Now, if anybody was there from dispatch or the scheduling, you know, they started getting all the information because the plane radioed them to say they were coming in on a hijack, you know, and releasing the passengers and the, what we're trying to figure out, he had said that he took off with a pilot and the flight attendant, which I know the flight, I don't know her, but we were saying, like Sherry said, they would have to have had more than one pilot even for him to take off mm -hmm. because they needed a navigator. Correct. And Correct. we don't know, you know, they should have more than the one. Um, there were two. Do you know that? There were two in the there pilot? Two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was fine. I never met them. I never saw them. All I did was the, the agents okay. and a little bit of the uh, equipment that they put yeah. on. Do you recall if you saw Donald Nyrop at all? Did, no. Did you ever see him there? No. Okay. No, just my, it was the only my boss and myself. Okay. And by the time, and I can't tell you if it was 11 or 11.30, but that's when I was sent home. I see, okay. And uh, <laughs> Great. I would can love we, to have stayed there. Can we go back a little bit to when you said you saw the money in, in how, what? It wasn't the what money it, itself. It was right. just like, you know, a packets of something. Mm -hmm. And it was like a backpack. And I... It's like I could yeah. just see straps and like maybe parachute. There was more than one, you know, so I couldn't tell you if it was three or four or whatever. It was just more than one. And then there was something over here too, like, you know, bundles or something like that. But I remember the amounts they were talking about. You know, he only wants or he wants 200000 That time it was a lot of money. And why did he only want that? You could just sort of hear the talking back and forth. Do you recall, did all... In, as, as far as an impression, were all the parachutes, did they all arrive together? Did they arrive at the same time? I can't time? tell you if they, and I just sort of, when I saw them, I saw them sort of in a, in a you know, together, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. not right. one at a time, but when okay. he requested four, they got four. Okay. Did um, the FBI or anybody at any time say, you know, keep, keep this to yourself, any kind of instructions like that, don't talk I to I don't press, think or? at that time they even realized 
the, how great the story was going to go right. and how far it was going to go. So it was just a matter, you know, I was there, I was observing, and told to go home. And then my boss never told me anything that I can recall not to say anything. And, I mean, I didn't really remember anything that I shouldn't say, that, you know, anything that was that private or secret or that I, I shouldn't bring up. But um, So maybe we can go back a little bit just to what it was like in general to work in the airlines uh, for the airlines at that time. Did you have any training before this on the subject of hijacking? Uh, no, not hijacking. I had been a flight attendant for Pan American in 59, 61. And so, you know, I had training that, and uh, but nothing, you know, I crash landed, uh, had a person die, but, you know, things like that, but I've never had any problem. Sherry was a flight attendant for 40 years with Northwest. And did you ever have any situations with anybody getting mm-hmm. other than you, drugs? You, for the record, could you say your name? Sherry Weaver. Weaver, okay. You were with Northwest as uh-huh. well? No, I was with Northwest. Okay. Oh, there's yes. Diane. There's my, he was very quiet in all that. But way different type of person. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's the only thing, but it would have been interesting. Could you, yeah. could you, sorry, could you actually repeat that observation about it being kind of the first? Like oh, at that time? Yeah, was, well, right. In those days, we didn't worry about somebody taking over our offices. Or, uh, I mean, it was just a time of life where it was nice to live. And we didn't, we didn't worry about somebody coming down with a gun or a box cutter. Or, uh, the planes were easy to, you know, if you wanted to show somebody the cockpit, you know, you could take them up to it and show them the cockpit. The well, kids could, you know. Uh, Christmas each year, mm-hmm. Lorraine, my wife, would bake a whole bunch of cookies. And uh, from the kitchen, we got those little gray boxes, cardboard boxes, mm-hmm. and filled them with cookies. And then Lorraine and I and our son Mike uh, would go out on the ramp and hand yeah, out cookies nice. to the outgoing right. crew. Yeah, it was, it was just that kind of it operation. Was, it was a, a great time, you know. It, in as far as with my experience with the airlines, I it sort of got me out of a stoop that I was in when I was hired. So I always thanked Northwest for giving me the life that I had, and I worked for 31 years. And Sherry flew for 40 at least, 39. 39. So and then Fran. How many years total if you were hired uh, in the 42. late? Forty-two. You had yeah. So we we've all had, but those days were just sunshine to me. I mean that was the type of life, and it was starting, you know, like in in the late '90s, maybe in the early 2000s, where you started having to pull back a little bit and look at who you, who the passengers were, mm-hmm. and getting a profile maybe on who was flying, and. Um, one time, uh, Sherry invited me to go to Amsterdam with her, and this was, I, was it right before I retired or right after? It was before. Around 1999. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, it was after. 2000, 2001. But we, uh, we were coming back from Amsterdam on a flight, and I was taking pictures of, you know, the crew. And when I got the picture back and I looked at a passenger, it was really scary because this passenger, I don't know what nationality he was, But if looks could kill, there was just this look on this guy's face like I was purposely taking a picture of him. And I always wondered about that because our Amsterdam flights were one of those places where people fly to to go somewhere else or come into. And that was, you know, that era. And so that's when I thought, you know, it's nothing like... I used to be able to go up and sit in the cockpit when, you know, I'd fly and, th- you know, we'll fly down low and go over Mount Rainier and you can't do any like anything like that anymore. So it, it's sort of a sad time that we're living in and some of the flight attendants were saying they feel sorry for our grandkids yeah. because we, we had it when it was just it's not the same love experience neighbor. At all. No, yeah. it's not at all. And, uh, Jay, can yes. I ask you a question about what you did? Were you, uh, did you do the weigh-ins for the stews? When it first started out, yes. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> now, actually, his boss, Mr. McFerrin.